Today we're going to be shooting the 124 grain Federal Punch personal defense jacketed hollow point bullet. I'll be using my 9mm Luger H&K VP9. I'll be putting five rounds into this bullseye target from 15 yards. We're going to then measure precision, in other words, the extreme spread of that five shot group, accuracy, in other words, the score on that bullseye target, and consistency will come from our lab radar chronograph. We're going to be looking closely at the standard deviation of the muzzle velocities. Then we're going to be doing one round of this same bullet into 20% NATO block clear ballistic ballistic gelatin and looking at the terminal ballistic performance of this federal punch bullet. I'll be firing that one round from seven yards, kind of the shooting distance or the fighting distance based on a lot of uh, statistics that come out of the, the FBI and the police departments. This bullet is also going to have to pass through two layers of canvas before it goes into the ballistic gelatin. In the past, that has clogged a lot of bullets. Passing through almost anything seems to have clogged a lot of bullets. In other words, those jacketed hollow points do not expand like they should. This year, with this canvas, well, I'm having some pretty good luck with bullets expanding. We're going to see how this one does. Enough talk. Let's get going. You know, these are not plus P, but I'm getting some good velocities. I'm getting velocities just like I was, oh, maybe a little bit slower, like 20 feet per second, perhaps. But uh, real nice velocities out of these. Let's take a look at the consistency. Uh, not so good in this one, 19.5 uh, feet per second. And I did capture all five of those rounds. Let's move up and do one round into the clear ballistic ballistic gelatin. The 124 grain Federal Punch clear ballistic ballistic gelatin. Let's see how it goes. You know, I've got two rounds already into that ballistic gelatin, that particular block. And um, I need to place this just right so I don't disturb the other two bullets. Um, and, and, and paths that are in there. So this particular block was brand new early this season. I ended up remelting it once and uh, only got two rounds into this new remelt. This will be round number three. Yeah, that went where I wanted her. Very impressive pistol, this HK VP9. Uh, this block was remelted once. This is the path of this Federal Punch bullet, and there it is, 124 grain Federal Punch. Let's go ahead and get a rough estimate. I figured by looking at it, we were at 14 inches, 14 and a quarter inches, I'd call that right now. And uh, we'll extract that bullet, weigh it to see how much weight it retained. Again, it started at 124 grains and we're hoping that it retained all that weight. Let's do a wrap up of this Federal Punch Bullet, 124 grain Federal uh, Bullet, and this is that bullet right here. Let's take a close look at it. I can clearly see a cantilure on this, expanded pretty darn nicely, and it did not clog going through that soft barrier. 
I will note that the soft barrier that I'm using this year isn't clogging any of the bullets, isn't really causing problems, short of sometimes some of that uh, soft barrier material will be retained by the bullet. This one doesn't show that, and so I guess that's a good thing anyway. Let's take a look at those precision, accuracy, and consistency results. Precision, 0.753 inch group, right there, and uh, just about, you know, three-quarter inch group size, um, but it scored pretty darn well, 49 points, one of those rounds breaking into the X ring. 1,197 feet per second out of the muzzle. This is not a plus P round. 19.6 uh, feet per second standard deviation. That's okay. If you saw our previous video or earlier video comparing two federal HST rounds, you will note that this um, 124 is slower than the federal HST uh, plus P round, and it didn't do that well in consistency. That bullet uh, gave me uh, single-digit um, consistency, standard deviations. This one darn near 20, so not quite as good. Let's take a look at the terminal ballistic results on paper. This bullet penetrated 14 and 3 quarter inches into that gel block. Um, 125.1 grains of retained weight, and you might be wondering now, hold on, this bullet started 124, ended up 125, what gives? Well, um, I didn't weigh that bullet before it was loaded by Federal. Um, it's listed as 124, very likely, and almost certainly, a little bit heavy, um, as loaded at the factory. This, uh, I, I weigh this on my RCBS Matchmaster scale. It is calibrated, and I have no doubt that that is the actual weight right there. So, that's just how it is. Um, but it gets that 100 plus percent weight retention. That's a good thing. The diameter of that retrieved bullet, just over half an inch, 0 0.565 of an inch. That gives me an expansion of 159 percent. Not too bad again. Length of that retrie uh, retrieved bullet, the length of it is 0 0.412 of an inch, giving me a final score of 382.5. Once again, this bullet did not quite make it into that 400 point threshold that I like to see with my 9mm or any of my bullets that I'm testing, um, but you know, it was, it was pretty close. What's interesting about this bullet is I can clearly see a cantilever on it. That doesn't really matter too much. It's just an observation. The, uh, the length of this bullet, not too bad. Uh, I like to see a relatively long shank on these bullets. That uh, helps ensure that it will keep traveling straight through the target or through that gel block. Um, peeled back those pedals pretty nicely and again, 100% weight retention. All in all, when I compare it with the Federal HST bullet that I uh, mentioned is kind of our reigning champion in many, many ways, uh, when I compare it to that bullet, the punch comes up just a little bit less every time. A little bit slower, probably because it's not loaded to plus P pressures, uh, didn't expand quite as much, didn't have uh, quite as good a score, actually penetrated a little bit more, but that's not always a good thing. What we want to do is to have that penetration up to about 12 inches in that 20% gel block. That helps to ensure that that bullet will expend all of its energy inside the target. Now, this is a fairly standardized target, this gel block, and in Real life scenarios, who knows, right? A very, very large muscular person, very, very large obese person, very, very skinny person. These bullets are going to do what they're going to do. Uh, and some cases will have complete over penetration. In other cases, 
uh, it may not penetrate deeply enough. We have to make our decisions as carefully as we can when we're looking at self-defense and personal defense weapons and what we don't want to see is a bullet that absolutely fails. Um, and maybe that's a bullet that um, gets very, very poor penetration, fragments maybe very early, those sort of things. That's a bullet I'd be really concerned about and I'd be less concerned about a bullet that over penetrates. That's just kind of my two cents on that after doing all these tests uh, over the years. And um, anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this um, episode of this video on PAC-T testing, the federal punch bullet. We've got some more stuff coming up, so stay tuned and thanks for watching.